Jehovah's Witnesses and the United Nations. How the Watchtower Society Fooled Millions. Chapter 2, entitled, The Watchtower and the UN. If you have had any association with Jehovah's Witnesses, I would say at least for a few years, you would know their stance on the United Nations. They're known for its very negative doctrines toward the UN. In fact, the UN has been the Watchtower's favorite target of finger pointing for several decades, and especially as far back as 1961. Take a look at this clip. Here's an excerpt from the June 15, 1961 Watchtower, page 360. So from here on out, I'm going to try and get snapshots of the references that are quoted in the book. I'm not going to leave them on for very long or else it'd make the videos pretty long and lengthy. So please feel free to pause and read the articles. So just keep that in mind from here on out throughout the series of this book. So the author makes some great points about... Uh, the United Nations and the Watchtower, and I'm going to read some of that here. She sums it up better than I could say anything else. So she says, it's not the point of this book to discuss whether the Watchtower's negative view of the UN is accurate or not. What she's here to discuss is this. In spite of its extremely negative doctrine, stating that the United Nations is Satan's puppet, the Watchtower Society organization in association with specifically the NGO non-governmental organization in association with the UN DPI, Department of Public Information. So she's not here to talk, discuss whether the Watchtower's view of this scarlet colored wild beast is correct or not. She's just merely stating their stance and how they view the United Nations. NGOs, again, non-governmental organizations, are not actual member states of the UN. Instead, they are an associate organization which gives them access to the various political elements of the UN. Although NGOs are not member states, they remain in place as active political players in the UN system. When an organization signs up to be specifically associated with the UN DPI, Department of Public Information, they are expected to publish educational information regarding the UN and its programs to the public. Therefore, when the Watchtower Society signed on as a DPI member, in association with the UN, they were agreeing to support this requirement. In 1991, the Watchtower Society filed its initial forms for registration as an NGO. After fulfilling the required criteria for association, the Watchtower Society was granted NGO status with the DPI the following year, which would be 1992. This association continued until the Watchtower Society withdrew its membership in 2001. So the Watchtower Society during these 10 years association and 9 years as an actual member, they began publishing friendlier information about the UN while at the same time publishing negative things as well. So now I am going to publish, or excuse me, I'm going to put up some of these contrasts, some friendly articles, and then some negative ones. So here we have a friendly article in the November 22nd, 1998 Awake pages six and seven entitled 
a view from the 29th floor. And now we have a negative article from the October 1st, 1995 Watchtower, pages 5 through 7. The article is entitled, A World Without War, When? Now we have a friendly article from the September 8th, 1991 Awake, pages 3 and 4. The article is entitled, What is Happening at the United Nations? And now we have a negative article from the October 1st, 1995 Watchtower, pages 3 and 4. The article is entitled, 50 Years of Frustrated Efforts. Now, according to the author, and I have to agree with her, this Awake article from September 8th, 1991, entitled The United Nations, A Better Way, this one tops the cake. The writer of this article was smart enough and clever enough to make the UN article sound friendly to outsiders, while Jehovah's Witnesses with inside information would understand the real meaning of the words. To a non-witness, this would sound as though the writer had a favorable view to the UN and its future, especially when using words like play a major role, developments will be very exciting, and do some astonishing things that may well amaze you. The reality is though, is that witnesses will actually see these words for what they really are, veiled references to their doctrine or view that the UN is the image of the beast of revelation, that scarlet-colored wild beast, who will be given authority for a short time before God's kingdom comes to destroy it. Now, you're probably thinking by now, hey, Rick, wouldn't the UN pick up on these contradictory articles well the UN has literally thousands and thousands of NGOs that are associated with them they don't have time to comb through every piece of literature published by all their NGOs and with the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society we all know they publish thousands and thousands of articles it would take one person dedicated to that project years and years to come through and find all of these negative articles about the UN. It's their job as an NGO to send the UN their annual samples of their individual write-ups regarding the UN activities. So as a result of that, Watchtower gets away with these good articles and keeping hush-hush about the negative ones. 
The thing that's interesting is that witnesses had this information, the negative ones and the positive ones, and the vast majority didn't seem to recognize their duplicity, or they just didn't raise any questions. How come? Well, the witnesses are taught that they must never question the Watchtower Society. They have to have unquestioning obedience. And since the witnesses, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society wasn't going to voluntarily tell the witnesses that they were members of the UN, and they have this fear of doubt and questioning things and having this unquestioning obedience, well, that's why the witnesses never found out. They're trained to reject information that's negative toward the Watchtower Society. And so, therefore, devout members would refuse to entertain such doubt, some such thoughts. Excuse me. As a matter of fact, it only became public when the British news company, The Guardian, outed the Watchtower Society with two articles about the matter. And so, the Watchtower Society did admit to registering as an NGO in association with the UN after the Guardian came out with these articles. But they claimed that they did so merely to have access to the UN's library system and nothing more. They also claimed that they were unaware of the requirements involved that happened to be in opposition to their doctrine. And when they found out about these changed requirements, they withdrew their membership. Another Apologist says that they did so to help third world countries. But were the Watchtower officials telling the truth or were they just trying to cover up a major scandal of hypocrisy? This is going to end chapter two. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking time to listen to my summary of Jehovah's Witnesses and the United Nations, How the Watchtower Society Fooled Millions. Post your comments, like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for Chapter 3.